Hey there, Margie Bryce here bringing you the Krabby Pastor podcast. And I don't think you're going to be too surprised to know that it's too easy today to become the Krabby Pastor. Our time together will give you food for thought to help you be the ministry leader fully surrendered to God's purposes and living into whatever it takes to get you there and keep you there. So we're talking about sustainability in ministry. Discouragement. Maybe that's you today. I know I have the type of temperament that waves and wafts in and out of discouragement Sometimes I'm too given to circumstances, what is or is not going on around me. And so I fall into a time of discouragement. So I want to share some things about that today with you. I'm just going to offer this for a moment out of 2 Corinthians 4, starting in verse 7. We have this treasure in jars of clay. And frankly, I will be the first to say I am indeed a cracked pot. So we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. That is something that maybe resonates with you today, although maybe you think, well, I do feel abandoned. I do feel in despair. I do feel crushed. And I do feel very hard pressed on every side. So today I want to share with you a story of my call, and it has to do with the call that actually I got to the place that I decided the best thing to do with my call was to give it a funeral. On some level, I felt that that would be a healthy choice. So after years of preparation, schooling mostly, after walking away from a career as a consultant who did consulting for healthcare clients and governmental clients and business clients. I had left all that to pursue ministry. I wasn't sure what that exactly looked like, but that didn't deter me at the time. As I got into things, though, I realized that there weren't a lot of women ministers around, and I was surprised by that. Again, you know, this is like (laughs) chronic naivete, you know, there you go again. And I struggled with that. And I even found studies and reports about why I should despair of that, that things weren't looking good for the home team. And I thought, man, Lord, why did you call me here for this, for this? Because it wasn't looking right. And I know some of you are probably feeling that way about covid It was nothing you did, right? Nothing that you could point the blame to and say, that is it. That's what I did. And that's why it just, it just is. The pandemic just is. And my situation just was. So this, seriously, I'm driving in the car, (laughs) which, you know, is really not I don't advocate. Don't try this at home. How's that? Or on the highway either. I'm driving in the car and I'm kind of lamenting to God. The tears are falling. Not so much so that I can't see where I'm driving or anything like that. And I heavily lamented. And it was at that moment that I decided I was going to do a graveside service for the burial of my call. Because if I was operating under some kind of delusion of grandeur or some kind of egotistical trip or what, you know, because the mistake has to be mine, right? It's not God's. It's mine. It was something that I 
didn't understand correctly or I didn't act on correctly or I got off track somewhere. You know, I mean, I'm sure you're getting glimmers of the level of perfectionism that I can get attached to at times. Even though I say about myself, I am a recovering perfectionist. So I did that in my head. I envisioned that we put my call in an urn and we buried it. And I said the words that you say to commit these things unto God. And boom, that was it. My call is dead. So I want to leave you with that for a moment. Hey, I would love to hear what makes you crabby or what might make you crabby on just the right day, you know, or maybe, maybe you know what makes your friend in ministry crabby. You could send that along too. send it to Margie at MargieBryce.com. That's Margie at MargieBryce.com. And that may indeed be fodder for our next session together. Discouragement also reminds me of a time that I had gone back to my undergraduate degree and and I had taken, I had done two years of college. I was a math major. I had done lots of calculus. I like numbers. I'm good with numbers, not afraid of numbers. So when I decided that I had to go back and finish my undergraduate degree, of course, I went back headed towards, again, a mathematics or engineering kind of major. And this is way before my call came that God was even establishing steps at that time. I was staying as a single mom with some friends with my two sons and small dog. And I was downstairs doing some homework and it was physics. And I I was trying to do these word problems, which I never really liked word problems all that well, but I was trying to do it and I couldn't, you know, I used to know all these formulas and information about math, like the back of my hand. And it had been like 10 years. So, so friends, you know, if you're in a school process, just finish it and do not take 10 years off. That's a bad idea. So I was trying to remember all of this, not able to finish the homework, feeling very overwhelmed. My housing situation was not resolved. It was just, it was a mess. And so I did, you know, what any red-blooded person might do, I decided crying over my physics book might, I don't know what, it just, the gates opened and it was flooding. And my friend came in and it was her home where I was living at the time. And she was very much into horses and carrying and doing all kinds of active things. She drove a truck. She did all kinds of really neat things. And she stood there and looked at me and asked, what, what is wrong? What is wrong? You know, because it, it looked bad and I'm a bad and ugly crier anyway. It just doesn't look right. I look worse than what the situation really is. And I, I told her, I said, I don't know I can finish this homework. I don't think I can do this. I used to know this stuff. I, and I don't anymore. And I don't know, maybe I've made a mistake and all of this. Well, it, uh, she looked me square in the eye and trust me, this person had no knowledge of physics or anything mathematical, like the kind of stuff I was studying, none at all. But she looked me square in the eye and she said, you can do this. I know you, you can do this. Maybe there's a couple of you that need to hear that today. You can do this. You can do this. Back to 2 Corinthians 4, it says, Therefore, because of all the stuff Paul just said, you know, even though we're jars of clay and we're encountering stuff that's trying to weigh us down, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. 
So that really puts that in the nebulous sphere for you. And maybe you're ready to punch me in the nose for even saying that. Maybe it's that kind of day and the courage just is not coming because that is what encouragement is, is giving courage. I'm going to backtrack to my story about my call and how I buried it. And I did the graveside service. And it was only a few weeks later that a friend in ministry called. And what had happened is this. A congregant from their from their church had come in and said, I'm older now. I want to leave some money to the church, but I don't want to wait till I'm dead. I want to actually get to see it be used in active ministry. And so he gave a lump sum to the church. And so my friend was calling to see if I would be interested. And now, mind you, he knew nothing about the funeral I had just had a few weeks earlier. And he wanted to know if I would come and take a role as an associate and work in small groups and help to bring in a contemporary worship service. So that gentleman's money was, it only takes one person, I want to emphasize here, a couple of times, my friend telling me, you can do this. One man coming forward and and wanting to gift the church. It only takes one person sometimes to lift you up. It only takes one. So I accepted that call. And the really funny part about the whole thing, and I knew that God would think that this is funny, and that's why the timing of it happened right around Easter. So You know, you can bury something, you can be so upset and so distraught with whatever situation you're dealing with, and you decide you're just going to bury it, you're just going to walk away, you're you just whatever. But just know this that our God is a God of resurrection power, and we can be encouraged by just one person lifting us up, doing something to make another person content, make another person have some courage to go on. The courage to go on is what what we need. And I want to say to you today that maybe you're sitting there saying, well, well, nuts to this. There's nobody has come around me to say that or to give some money so I can take a, a ministry role or nothing supernatural has happened like that for me. Then what I want to say to you is this. Maybe this is a moment for you to give courage to another person. Maybe there's someone around you that needs to have some courage and they don't have any right now. And you're hearing this and you're thinking, I don't feel like I have anything to give. Let me tell you from experience, even just that you can do this at the right time, prayerfully given can have great weight and great impact. And I want to remind you too that coaches are all about empowering you to step into everything that God has for you. Coaches are, in my call specifically, is about giving you some courage and helping you to see that God has given you gifts so that you can step into everything that God has for you to accomplish in your ministry, but sometimes we get in our own way. We get stuck in maybe discouragement. We get stuck in the weight of everything we're carrying. We get stuck in the level of expectations of people all around us. We get stuck in feeling inadequate. And on and on and on I could go, but I want to remind you that coaches are a special kind of spiritual companion that can give you some courage to go on and step into everything that God has prepared for you in advance to do. Hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for considering what it looks like to be the crabby pastor. And my hope and prayer would be that you would be doing everything that you need to do to not be the crabby pastor. <laughs>